is mystery. As a matter of fact, I call it an art form because you're shaping the plant for something for someone to admire, you or your friends or your neighbors or your family, but it's, it's an art form. It isn't something you just go in and you cut everything down level at six inches above the ground, no. And pruning is done for a reason. It's to remove old dead wood. If there's any dead wood within a plant any time of the year, and there are two times to prune, by the way, there's in the spring of the year and in the fall of the year, um, and then any time during the season, if there's something wrong, you always go in and prune and take any broken limbs or any dead or decayed limbs out. But for the most part, it's to remove dead, uh, dead wood and shape it back. Now, one of the things you want to do is to stimulate new growth, and that's why we cut back wood in order to make a break open. And most important in the summertime is to let light in. Now, the best time to prune in the north is in March. In the Sun Belt, it's January and February, and you do it always after the last killing frost uh, in the north. Now, once we go in to remove, to do our pruning and trimming, we always want to cut above the lowest outside break. And here is, a light, is an outside eye. So I'm pruning this on the, on the south and west side. And the reason I say that is because uh, you will always prune limbs on the south and west side of your plants four inches shorter than those on the north and east side of your plant. Uh, because um, the ones on the north uh, and, and the north and east don't get as much light. Again, we're coming back because we're going to shape this one, and I'm coming back right here. And after I do any cutting or trimming, I always seal all of the wounds, so don't forget that. Here again, I'm coming around now, and I'm still going to go low here. Now, I will come up at least four inches higher, and here I'm just going to make that fresh cut, and I'll seal it. Here now, I've got, a, I've got something. I've got the center of the bush. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go in and pull off that foliage and all the way down the center because I want the center to be clean. I'm again going to cut up in here. I'm going to an outside break here. I'm higher than there. Here I'll go to, I'm going to take this outside break and I'm going to cut this one a little bit smaller. If I have any place on the bush, I have anything that's crossing over and rubbing each other. For instance, right here, I'm real low. I want low break because I want my foliage to come out low. I've got two of them down in here that were crossing each other. I'm going to sacrifice this foliage for right now because I like the position of this other limb and there's dead wood inside. Now I'm going to take and make a mixture of uh, liquid seven, about a teaspoon, in a in an eight ounce uh, can of interior latex paint and I'm going to go over and I'm going to dab each one of my cuts first of all because I think it looks a heck of a lot nicer that's number one and number two because I don't want to encourage uh, insects and diseases from going in there and so by doing that and protecting my bush all the way along it will be fine and again remember you're doing it with a purpose in mind not just for the heck of going out and pruning if you will keep your roses in perfect shape, remember that word, keeping in shape. Humans have to keep in shape, plants have to keep in shape, especially the queen. You'll have the most beautiful roses that you've ever seen. Summer insect and disease control are immensely important because if you don't take care of them, of your roses, you're going to lose them. Black spot, rust, cankers uh, are the most serious problems that you have with roses. So if you use the all season cleanup tonic every two weeks like you're supposed to and saturate the soil underneath, wash them off real good, there's probably no reason for you to use the heavy duty uh, artillery that you have to. But if you really have the problems, then bring it out. And that's in the form of rose and flower dust. Rose and flower dust is available any garden center. 
it's in a container that you can already use if you want to. But when you punch the holes, if you're going to use this container by itself, don't make the full size holes. Make them smaller so that when you dust over the top of them, you dust. And, and by the way, you have to dust very high. It's, you're going to get a dust, not mat, all over the, the leaves. Because if you do, then you're not helping anything. You're hurting everything. When you have to bring it out, you're going to use the rose dust in a duster. Dusters are available in every garden center. Make sure it's on a day when there is no wind. You're doing it in the evening without spectators. No children, not the wife, not anybody. I don't want anybody around. And then check the wind. Always throw something up to see what direction the wind's in. And you go upwind and dust downwind, making sure you get in underneath, over the top. So now if you keep them washed with the every two week spray, uh, and, and only bring out the dust when it's absolutely necessary, you won't have a problem. The most important job that you have to do in a rose garden this fall is take care of them so that they're ready to come back next year. There is no reason why you have to replace roses every year. They should grow for years and years and years. And the first thing you have to do is control the insects in the soil. And that's by, done by using one cup of liquid dish soap and diazin, a soil insect control, at the recommended rate inside using your 20 gallon hose end sprayer. In areas where you got a lot of snow, a lot of bed weather, a lot of freezing and everything, use rose cones over the top of the plant. And when you bring them together, I want you to bring the canes together with pantyhose and just snug them up a little bit so that you can get them inside. Cut them back only so they go inside of the cane. And then I want you to seal the, the cuts with any interior latex paint with a little bit of liquid seven inside of it to seal them off. Then sprinkle paradichlorobenzene moth crystals as a repellent for varmints that would nest or chew on the bark. After you have pruned them and cut them back, then I want you to spray with uh, ammonia and shampoo. And the, the way to do that is two tablespoons of household ammonia, two tablespoons of, of liquid dish uh, soap, and then go ahead and spray them down. Never feed with regular fertilizer after August the 15th because you'll stimulate new growth that's going to be wiped out by Jack Frost. Mix together, bone, five pounds of bone meal, one pound of Epsom salts, give each of your roses a half a handful of this mixture. And last but not least is to give them their final bath so they go to bed comfortable and don't have to worry about insects for the rest of the fall and for next spring. And there you're going to use a cup of liquid dish soap, a cup of antiseptic mouthwash, a cup of chewing tobacco juice, apply it from your 20 gallon hose end sprayer. I'll guarantee you that your roses will not be bugged for winter or come next spring. In areas where the temperature goes below freezing, you have to wrap up your roses. You can't just leave them hanging out there and expect next winter after the snow goes away and you get out that you're gonna have any roses left. You've got to wrap them up. And wrapping them up means to, to mulch them so that they go to sleep and stay asleep. For some reason, some folks have the idea that when we put them, when we mulch roses, what we're trying to do is keep them warm. No, we want them, we want them to go dormant, to freeze and stay frozen so that they're not woke up and all the energy comes out of. The first thing, you, you can use cardboard boxes, you can use white rose co uh, cones. It's got to be white in order to reflect. It is not plastic and has to be vented. Second of all, I want you to cut your roses back so they comfortably will fit into a rose collar. And that simply means to come down and make the cuts so that it will, that will go into the rose collar and that I have room to uh, cut back come spring with new growth. Once you do that, then we're going to take and we're going to tie the rose. We're going to bring the rose together with a piece of nylon stocking. And because nylon stocking is strong, it will, it, uh, it expands itself. I just simply tie them up and bring them together tight enough so that they won't rattle around and will stay inside. That done, then we're going to take and use soil. 
and the soil has to come from away from the garden. It can't be from underneath it. It has to be new soil from around the garden, and I'm going to put it around and heap it up as high as I can here. I pack it down, and now I'm going to take a pest strip, an ordinary insect pest strip, and I'm going to hang it inside onto one of the, the canes. We'll just put it around here. And what it does is it puts an insect uh, control inside of here so that when I pour the leaves over the top of it, and that's what I want to I want to make I want to put the leaves over. I want to make sure that they get inside all around the rows on the top of the crown. Right? Get it right up inside. Then I'm going to take my my rose cane. I'm going to put it over the top like this. I'm going to put a brick on top to anchor it down and hold it in place so it's down. Then I'm going to take and punch a hole in the east about three inches down in the east side and in the north side in order to let ventilation go through that it is from the top. But I must pull it together so that it goes inside, use the soil to heal up over the graft, put the leaves on so that once it goes to sleep, it stays to sleep, put the cone over the top, the pest strip inside for pest uh, control to kill any insects that are nursing around in there, and then I'm ready to walk away and know that I have safely taken care of my roses for the winter. So there you have it, folks, a step-by-step -step guide on how to have the biggest, bloomiest, brightest roses on the block, and there's no mystery or magic to growing these lovely ladies. Just the basic know-how of preparing and feeding and maintenance, along with a dose of common sense thrown in, and now that you're armed with this knowledge, there's no excuse for not trying one or more of these grand dames in your own backyard. Go on, you won't regret it. As for me, all of my hard work is done. Now it's time for me to stop and smell the roses. Until next time, I'm Jerry Baker, America's Master Gardener, wishing you good gardening and good luck.